heaven in Jesus and us, we are all together. We thank him for uniting us and the children. We just thank him so much because we are his children. Let's pray. <coughs> Abba, Father, we thank you for loving each one of us and calling us cherished in your eyes. We thank you so much that we have life, that we can breathe, that we have friends, and we can have fellowship together. We thank you for that. It's so important for us to remember you, Jesus, that we abide in you, that it's better that we are with you. Just like that song said, that this home here on earth is temporary, but our home in heaven with you is forever. Thank you so much. And thank you for showing us your way, your desires. So many people are living in darkness and sin and rebellion. They need to repent and accept your gospel. We need to preach your gospel so that they can turn to you. And help us to show your love and your character and your attitudes. How beautiful your light can shine through us through the world of darkness here. That your light will be clear and we can be like salt. Thank you that we can follow you. That this word of mine is not going to be mine. That I'm going to be following you. I'm not going to be preaching my words. Your word is beautiful, Father. It's amazing. And you are teaching me, and I'm learning so much through your word. Help me to analyze myself and each one here to do that for themselves. That they can repent. That they can repent of their complaints or their sins, and that they can return to you. And don't allow the world to interfere with that. We don't want to go to hell. We want to be with you. We want to do what you want us to do. And Satan will cause us to feel embarrassed, but we want to show your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we are his children. This is what it says here. My sermon is about the Holy Spirit. God places the Holy Spirit with us. And he promises to give each believer the Holy Spirit. And it will help teach us. And he will train us and help us to pray so many different things. And he is the best one to help us. And he will be with you everywhere you go. That's God's promises. Just like before Jesus went up into heaven, he said that, he loves all of us here. He loves his disciples. And he wants us to fellowship with one another. But Jesus said that he was going to be leaving. And Peter, Peter said, no, no. I'm going to follow you wherever you go. But Jesus said that you will be scared. You won't know what to do. But in three days, the rooster will crow. And you will have denied me three times. Peter was amazed. And next, Jesus said that he was getting ready to enter heaven. He's going to prepare a home for each person. And you know what happened after that, a little hot three years ago. We walked together and we talked together for three years. And you don't even know where I'm going? said that I am the only way. That me and the Father's ways are the same. And if you believe in me, you can have unity with God. You can have life in heaven. Now remember Adam. He ate the fruit that he wasn't supposed to. And that caused sin to enter the world. And that caused a dissension between God and man. And now Jesus said that he's bringing life to everyone. The Bible emphasizes God's promise of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus will send the Holy Spirit to each believer, that the Holy Spirit will live inside each one's heart. It says that we must have love.
So if you love the Lord, you need to obey what he says. If you do not obey the Lord, that means you don't have love for him. Then Jesus said that he's going to heaven for a specific purpose. He's going to heaven so that he can provide the Holy Spirit to each believer. That each believer will have the Holy Spirit with them. And the Holy Spirit will help them find the truth. Because the world is full of confusion with illegitimate teachings. But the Holy Spirit will give discernment. The Holy Spirit inside each person's heart will tell them what the truth is. Will help them be able to analyze that person's speech and if it um, matches with this, uh, the word or God's teaching. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are together as one. Go ahead, go to the next slide. You know a long time ago that the Jews had a temple, and this is what it looked like. Now Israel was enslaved in, into a town in Egypt. And God called them out of Egypt. And God called them his people. He said that they were his people. And he wanted them to build a, ta a tabernacle. Now there were two angels that were, had their wings bowing over the table. And... That showed that God was with Israel. Now that next peach, uh, picture said that Jesus is Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means that God is with us. He's with the people. Emmanuel means that God is with us. Now, God did not leave us alone. He did not abandon us when he, Jesus went to heaven. When Jesus went to heaven, he provided the Holy Spirit for anyone who repented of their sin and accepted Jesus as their Savior. So you see the temple, both of these temples here, it's not like a picture of your body. The Holy Spirit was in the temple back then, but in today's world, the temple is in us. God, God's Spirit is in each individual who's already accepted Christ because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was telling them that soon the Holy Spirit will be with you. And he will bring you home and he will give you understanding and wisdom and bring you unity back to God. And you will have life everlasting. Now when the Holy Spirit being with you has a meaning to that. That means it's like Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit is in you. Jesus and the uh, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are the Trinity. And that's what's inside you. This is what Jesus is trying to impress upon us. That if you have love, you will obey him. But if you don't obey him, that means you don't love him. So love is equa equatable with obedience. So our obedience is what we do. And we want to do the same as Christ. Just like that song says, that we need to show his love. We need to show his character. Just like the song just said. Jesus says, soon the time is coming short. And so I want to warn each one of you that I'm going to be sending the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is vital in teaching you to grow in Jesus. Jesus told them that he was with them three years and taught them and he may, they may not have understood fully everything or remember everything, but the Holy Spirit inside of them will help them recall all the things that Jesus taught them for three years. And they, they'll be thankful for that Holy Spirit. 
And Jesus told them all that he will give them peace. <coughs> that he will not have the same peace that the world has. It will be a different kind of peace. And Jesus told them that he will give them the best peace. That they won't have to worry. They won't have anxiety. Go ahead and the next slide. story that there was a rich man. He had a gigantic mansion, fancy mansion, and he had a wall that there was nothing on it. But there was one drawing on it, one painting he drawing. So he went and he bought another one. He wanted one apiece. And he went to another place looking for one, a painting apiece. When somebody finished drawing it, he brought it back. There were two of them, two paintings. And each of them looked like this. So the man put it on about next to his wall and he wondered which one showed peace. Which one of these two pictures showed peace? Now Jesus is our peace. We are living in the world. We can truly have peace here, but this, is, this looks like peace. But when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you will have true peace because you are united with Christ. And you are looking forward to him. You are trusting him. He's in your eternal home that he will be up there soon, that you're living in this world temporarily. And that he will show his love and his character to us be a lot of problems in the world, but we can still smile through them because God gives us peace. And we can be grateful for that. That he gives us the peace that passes all understanding. A lot of us want peace like this picture. We might want a good health, our house is great, but that is really not peace. The Holy Spirit can help us have peace in our minds. You're right, um, the world is temporary and it has lots of problems. There's wars. People are angry and furious about things. But our peace comes from God. And the Holy Spirit gives us peace. Now Jesus says, as you watched me serve, I will give you the Holy Spirit so that you can be successful in your serving and that you will be able to trust me. Jesus said again, a warning, that Satan is out in the world. He's like a lion ready to devour you up. But Jesus said that he's going to provide the Holy Spirit inside of you so that you would be able to follow him, to do his will, to do what he wants, and that you would follow him. And God would be the provider. God would provide like a good father does to his children. The Holy Spirit that is in you is going to help you during the final days of judgment. Jesus will see that you are his children, and the Holy Spirit is your proof, is the proof that Jesus knows that you will not need to go through judgment. But those who do not have the Holy Spirit marked in their heart, then they, he knows that those are not his children. Jesus cherishes the children, and the Holy Spirit unites us with Jesus, he unites us with the Father. It's a beautiful relationship. And our, so that way our characters will be like God. We will have hope in him, and we will have an eternal home. Our, our home here on earth is temporary, but our home with him is eternal. You know, the Samaritan woman, and Jesus was talking to them in Samaria. 
Jesus was talking about the water. The water was alive if they were, she repented. But she had been married to many men, and some that weren't even her husband she was with. But the Samaritan woman was embarrassed about that Jesus knew all of that. So she wanted to try to distract him and said, so where should we worship? She wanted to know, should we worship the you know, mountain in Samaria or should we worship in the temple in Jerusalem? Which place should we go? But Jesus answered her that neither of those places will be important soon. He told her that each person will have the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, to be able to worship God in their hearts. So Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit that he was going to be sending in the future when he went to heaven. And that he would place them in each person's heart so that they would be able to worship God. And so the Samaritan woman was there listening to Jesus' teaching. Now the Jews were looking and waiting for the Savior, for the Messiah to come. But they thought he would be a wealthy king. And he told them that the Messiah is here, I'm here. And the woman was so excited that she was able to actually meet the Messiah that she ran back to her town and told everybody what Jesus had told her. So from that time on, they didn't worship anymore of, of the idols. They worshiped the one true God, and then they were able to receive the Holy Spirit. And we know that God is still with us because he has placed his Holy Spirit in our hearts. And he is with us always. And we are grateful for that. He never abandons us. He never leaves us. There isn't a place in the world where God can't see you. He can see you in every place. Because Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father are all one. And we need to repent and change our attitudes because he loves us. We are the salt of the earth. We are the conduit for his light to shine through. But if we don't obey God, there's no action that proves our love to him. And we don't have love for him. I was reading this right. I was just telling God that I was very thankful for it. I was very thankful that Jesus left the earth. And I really enjoyed his teaching and his love. But I love that he left because the Holy Spirit came to us. That God sent the Holy Spirit in peace. Father, I just thank you for the story that you've written here. The time is approaching that we need to understand your promises that you cherish us and love us. That your wisdom is different than the world. You're <coughs> grateful. But how you remind us that you don't abandon us, that you are with us always. Thank you, Father, for helping us to repent, to to restore our relationship with you and that we can be in your home, in your heavenly home for eternity and that you are our hope and we don't have to worry or be frightened about anything. And we should never have fear that we should always keep our eyes on you and that the Holy Spirit will give us peace and safety. Now Satan tries to confuse us. That you have given us peace. Sometimes the world has peace, but your peace is different. We need to separate that. Even though 
things happen and problems happen in our world. We have wars, we've had illnesses, the pandemic. But as we abide in you, your Holy Spirit is inside of us, telling us the truth, helping us to repent and to change our ways, that you are our hope. We need to depend on you and you are our hope and look to you for our eternity and our eternal life. We pray, please, that you would help the Holy Spirit to convict other people. This is such a beautiful thing. Thank you, Lord. Father, you know the, you know the world is full of financial problems, illnesses, just all kinds of just bad things that will happen. Things have happened in the past that are bad. There are things that will happen in the future, but nothing is new to you. It may be new to us but nothing is new to you. But Father, you've given us a new life. Our old life is gone. Help us to remember that. Help us to remember that if we love you, we need to obey you. And if we don't obey, that means we don't have love, even though our words say we do. Father, as we go home tonight, help us to think about your word. Help us to just meditate daily that your word will be in entrenched in our lives, that none of this will be forgotten or be overwhelmed or over our heads, but that your Holy Spirit will bring unity between us. We thank you, Father. Thank you for Jesus, for providing this teaching, for providing the truth. We lift everything up to you to take care of, Father. We're your children. In Jesus' name we pray.